pleasant good day everyone my name is justin scott here from 876 invest and we're here with a great interview for you once again with the illustrious mr metri siaga right <laughs> he's been a part of the jmea jfp he's been a part of jamaica u driver and a whole host of other boards and associations and we really just got some time in his busy schedule to have a sit down with him so he can tell us about his experiences and his outlook on jamaica and the economy going forward sir metri how are you doing today very well thanks justin thanks for having me i appreciate being here and always happy to try to uh, lend my voice to the young people that are starting in new careers and going down new avenues and it's a great um, thing that you're doing and um, look forward to it being a huge success and me being able to say that I was one of the first, um, one of your first interviews. Exactly. Oh, that's perfect, man. <laughs> All right. So my, my mom owned it. Uh, she had started it many years before. My father was actually in the clothing manufacturing business. So I had a, a choice to make. Um, between which of those two businesses I was going to go into or if I was going to do something on my own. I ended up choosing the rent -a car business because um, the policies of the government at the time were more geared towards imports rather than manufacturing. And the manufacturing industry was floundering, uh, for want of a better word. So I went into the rent -a car business, learned a lot. Um, and along the way, uh, got involved in other businesses. Um, at times, I remember writing down a list of all the businesses that I was in, and it was eight or nine at one time. Um, my cousin had left the States to come back home to Jamaica and um, started a fiberglass manufacturing company. Um, we became partners in it, and we, which is currently now Jeff B. Uh, that business, I have worked in at various different levels in terms of my involvement in the business. So I stayed in the rent -a car business for many years, for 10 or 12 years. Um, went into the motor vehicle business, went into um, finance went into travel agency business. I, I, I tried, tried a lot of things, um, but the truth is that this business, JFP, has always been there and been a stable. and And I love it. I, I love the creation of taking raw materials from nothing and turning them into a finished product that you can see and admire. Okay, so that's so kind of the, the elevator pitch. Okay, so like like it's been your calling because, well, as you said, your father would have been a part in, in manufacturing in general and then from there would have kind of gotten an experience to a bit of the ins and outs and maybe perhaps managing the operations from there. Correct. So I, when I used to come home from university for summers, I would work with my dad and then uh, I, I took a gap year between uh, high school and university where I worked in okay. my father's business. and. That was invaluable. Um, I, I learned all facets of the business. And um, I guess, yeah, I really did love love it. And that's where I've ended up. OK, so so that, um, so when you said the reason why I would have chose to go into the rental car business at that time is because at the time, Jamaica was really geared towards manufacturing in that in that regard. Is that kind of what, what well, kind of led yes. you to? Correct. What led you to um to being a part of the JMA and then the JME and then which eventually oh you know merged into the JME? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Um. I'm sure it played a a, a, a some role. You, you know. L listen. Our, our policies have changed over the years, and I in the JME have lobbied for the last 10, 12 years to get certain things changed, some with some degree of success and some without any at all. So, um, yeah, that could have been the catalyst for sure. Okay, okay. All right, I actually have a question here that I wanted to bring up. So, tell us about how you oversaw the merger between the Jamaica Manufacturing Association and Jamaica you know, okay. exporting association. Right? The, tr tr truthfully, that, that was 
that was one of the things that I'm most proud of in in my tenure as president of JMA, and then subsequently the JMA, because it had been tried, uh, it had been tried quite a few times by very influential and important people in Jamaica, and just couldn't bring the parties together. And I think that um, Michelle Chung, who was president of the Jamaica Exporters Association, maybe that's what it took. Maybe it took a woman to be a part of the arrangement to to bring some sanity to the table and get it done. <laughs> but um, I, 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 it, it took a lot of work. And the executive director at the time, I make a breeze now of the JMA, was very instrumental along with the entire team in getting that done. And it was... It was difficult. We had to win hearts and minds, and we had to we had to overcome a lot of skepticism, but overcome a lot of problems. And every time they came to the table and told us why it couldn't happen, we just had to climb that hurdle and and mm. find out how it was going to happen. Right, right. Was there anything you can give us towards like the background of it? Because a lot of the times we, especially on the um this side of the media, will be seeing. Okay, so we'll see. Deal executed, you know, the merger confirmed, but we don't really know like what kind of goes on behind closed doors in terms of organizing mm -hmm. itself. Listen, it was uh, what you had is you had one association um, with about 400 members and another association with about 400 members, and some of those crossed. You had two organizations that were not equally yoked financially. Um, you had organizations that had past presidents of each of them uh, mm. not wanting their quote unquote their legacy to to, oh. to go away you had people who felt that um, the JEA was fighting for a different cause than manufacturing the, the exporters association also deals with agriculture and with people who don't manufacture anything but grow things um, so people would say well that can't happen because we can't bring people who are not manufacturers into the manufacturers association, things like that. Um, but as I said, we, we were resolute in that we were not willing to accept that there was any obstacle that was too, uh, or any mountain too high for us to climb. And we simply, as the problems, as the issues came up, we chipped at them until we knocked them down and moved forward. Okay, absolutely. Because I, well, looking now, or I suppose in, in hindsight, it's easy to see how these organizations would work together well in terms of the synergy because from, say for example, agricultural, agricultural aspect of things, they would work on the raw material, the raw product, and then distribute it. And then from there now, the local companies can then take apart and then process it. So it's important that all the stakeholders are, are properly aligned. You see, yeah, you see, Justin, let me tell you, I, I feel that why Jamaica's manufacturing has not flourished is because we have not utilized our most uh, valuable resource, which is our location. Uh, we are located in the Americas where Singapore is located in Asia. And we have never used that as our, uh, as our preferred position. And what we have done for years, we have allowed our foreigners to come in and take away our raw material. So we have people that come in and dig out our bauxite and send away the raw bauxite. We have people that come in and pick our coffee. They come in and they, they, they plant our sugar cane and they send it away as without refining. And for too long, we have allowed this trend to continue. And what my wish to see is is where Jamaica is taking that raw material and adding value to it. Because of our location, we are perfectly poised to do the value added here and send that away. And that is when manufacturing and export will flourish. Absolutely. And until we get that mindset and until we understand that that's how we should be building our economy and not putting all our eggs into one basket, as we have done for too very long, true I've, in my in my view one of the hurdles that i would have had in mind or would have been seeing is a high cost of energy that we have in jamaica well listen <clears throat> yeah we, we, energy costs are high no doubt but there's a solution 
we have a situation where we have 300 days of sunshine in Jamaica. So let's use it. Solar energy is there. It's, it's able to bring your cost of electricity down significantly. And in, in fairness to successive governments, they have set a plan to bring renewables to about 30% of the total usage for JPS. So I, I see light bills going to come down. I'm going to come down significantly. And people can make that happen sooner rather than later. So I don't buy the, the, the fact that we don't have inexpensive electricity. Um, mm. in, in many instances, it's not needed to add value. You know, the, the value added can be brain power, can be manufacturing of widgets that doesn't take a lot of electricity. So we need to look at the areas that we can have a competitive advantage in those that don't take an immense amount of electricity but we need to do something about that too right and there are ways that's true that's true you know whether you want to attack it with uh, through solar energy um hydroelectricity i know we have winter wind farm although yeah. they would need to to <laughs> expand operations a bit more to really provide as much yeah. energy that we need so, so listen, I'm not, I'm not telling you what the solution is. I'm saying there is a solution. And it absolutely. is probably a mix of, of a few different things. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. But indi individual factories and individual value adders need to take the responsibility into, into their own hands. At GFP, we are fully 100% solar powered. Um, really? Yeah. So, so, you know, it's given us a competitive advantage. Okay, that's so interesting. Did you also um play it? So is this all solar material that you would have imported but locally, or do you have a, a part to play in actual manufacturing process, given that no. you know you can manufacture <laughs> some of the materials? No, we, we everything is imported and we are not okay. at that stage, but we need to get there. So I'm not saying we must do everything, but we may be able to build panels, we may be able to build inverters, whatever right. the case may be. If there is enough demand in the region, remember, we, we, we sit a stone's throw away from the United States, North America, and a stone's throw away from South America. Those are two markets that have 350 and 300 million people respectively, with very high purchasing power. So those are markets that are huge markets for us. So what we need to do is look at some mergers and acquisitions of local companies with foreign companies as to how to bring the expertise here transfer the knowledge and get us into those international markets with the export products after we have added value absolutely all right is there a is there a place for or rather not actually yeah, is there a place for the gmea to 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 work towards um either setting up that demand or or setting up the the local manufacturers to, to, to get towards um a, a, a quarter of um right a quarter of how much all the manufacturers use the solar yeah I, I think there is a benefit. place for the JME yeah there, there there is a there is a market I think if we are relying on the Jamaican market alone it's too smart so we need we would need to be making panels and other components for international market not just jamaica All right and even working towards with um together with other countries within the region correct correct right. okay okay um last question to the jamie is there anything is there anything you wish that you would have been able to accomplish or or worked on you know what um before your tenure as the president of jamie had it in, ended um, yeah, there one specific thing was a procurement policy. The, the, the procurement policy for Jamaican products, for Jamaican, the, the government of Jamaica to purchase is one usually based on lease cost. And sometimes it's the lease cost is the most expensive route that you can take. And I fought, I fought for the last 12 years to try and get the, the government to change its procurement policy to buy local when and where possible. And if they are not buying local, they need to show us a good reason why. And mm. it's been a hard task and it, I, I was not successful in it. Um, we have, we got some way down the wicket 
but it hasn't been implemented in any full and meaningful way as yet. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not been substantive. Okay. Okay. So let's hope the current president, uh, Mr. John Mafood, can can take a role to to work upon that one. Yeah. Yeah, listen, it's something that's been being fought for the last 25 years. So it, it's going to happen one day. I think the government is going to wake up and realize one day that, listen, you, you know, I, I always use the analogy that it's like you own a shop and you live upstairs a shop. It's all in one house. And your mother sends you to go and buy some bread. And you walk downstairs and you walk through your shop and go down the road and buy bread from from down the road. <laughs> from somebody it's, else, right. It seems ludicrous to me. And, uh, and I always try to explain to the government. I try to explain to the government, listen, if you spend $100 million and you spend it with a local manufacturer, 30%, approximately, depending on the item, 30% goes towards raw material and the other 70% stays in Jamaica. So Jamaica as a country, the government spent 100 million and Jamaica kept 70 million out of that. When you buy from overseas <clears throat> with that same 100 million, 95 million of that goes somewhere and 5% stays in Jamaica for agency fees or some other minute thing. So 5 million stays in Jamaica versus 70 million. So Jamaica got $65 million poorer was taken out of the economy to me we can't afford not to buy from ourselves and mm -hmm. that's an equation that needs to be calculated and the government needs to say listen if i'm buying something made in jamaica the the price can be up to 50 percent higher and it's still true to buy from them because we are putting jamaicans to work those Jamaicans are paying light bill and water bill and telephone bill. I'm going to the supermarket and feeding the economy. When the money goes to China, you are feeding the Chinese economy. All right, it's pretty much like just pushing the arm, the cost down the road. So like you pay, you pay, Correct. you pay less here, but then the benefits are are lost, essentially. Correct. Correct. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. And that's something I'm very passionate about and I've tried my best to get successive governments to understand that, you know, it, it, it's necessary to look at it, but not get in much movement. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. You know, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can look forward to better days in that regard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So. I've been hoped. Right. So for Jamaica Fiberglass now. All right. So I remember reading an article and it said back JFP. in 2013. JFP. Um, I remember reading an article that said back in 2013, <laughs> it was reported that to close your biggest deal at the time in Sanders Resort, something about to the tune of um, 300,000 US dollars at the time. You know, what's the process like to secure a project like that? It was exciting and unique. And, um, you know, we really appreciate the, the Sanders group for giving us the giving us the opportunity um since then I, I think that was really the the job that got us into the hotel business um so we manufacture hotel room furniture um and sandals gave us the opportunity um and since then we have been able to do the spanish court hotel the new s hotel the courtyard marriott the ac marriott renfro hotel um and and these are not companies that you have to that they give you the work because they know you and they like you know these are big international chains that you have to meet right. specific guidelines with your furniture and the furnishings and um we we have an amazing staff here and they were able to do it and get the job done and have made us proud and every single one of the customers that we have in in, in that industry um to date have always have all been phenomenally happy and never had any complaints absolutely so i see you bring up our hotel and ac hotel a lot of these sound pretty recent man like in the last uh year or two yeah we've we've consistently been getting the local brand hotels uh, 
so we did the S Hotel in Spanish, in Montego Bay. We are in the process of doing the Rock Hotel, which is opening in Kingston uh, by Christmas. So we're okay. actually started that installation this week. Um, and we bid against companies out of the United States, Port, um, Mexico, Spain, and, and we're able to win it based on price and quality of samples and that sort of thing. So we, we, we have a great staff who really continue to, to, to go above and beyond uh, and, and do first class work. <clears throat> okay. So, as I say now, with the um, oh yeah, so seeing as how coronavirus sort of came along, that sounds like the, the, the timing worked well with you guys, because I imagine when all of the hotels were either closed or in really low, really low mm -hmm. volumes in, in people, and you'd have gotten a lot more time to be installed in working with them and, um, and, and things like that. No, actually the opposite, because what, what happened is they had no business. So oh. the, a lot of our customers um, stopped the jobs that we were working on with them. So we do all of the KFC stores in Jamaica and throughout the Caribbean. And, you know, they called us and said, listen, hold on. We don't have any customers. So stop. Um, which as good customers of ours, we had to do that. Stop. And we had to reframe our thoughts and pivot in a direction that we could go into. And so we started to manufacture things that were pandemic centric. So we, we started to manufacture acrylic glass shields and- Yeah, I would have seen a lot of those. And, yeah. In like um, in banks and places. Things. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's something that we did. And um, it, uh, it has allowed us to keep our doors open. Okay. Okay. I was thinking that because, you know, the hotels that have been making so much money from before that during the pandemic, uh, it's just a matter of, all right, let's make use of the opportunity. But I imagine because they're either unsure about the length of the pandemic the or maybe, yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. or maybe of like your, your credit policies that you would say, okay, um, this is a particular policy that we have, so we wouldn't be able to do this, to continue this project right now with, um, with such long standing receivables, depending on how long it goes. Yeah. Or is that not? Yeah. Yeah, well, normally, you know, we don't have a lot of receivables. We normally work on a contract basis, so it's a deposit and then customers pay us. But the truth is that we did work with some customers and said to them, listen, if you need to do stuff, we work with you and do it because we have a good relationship with our bank and our company is not heavily indebted. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's worked so far, but it can't continue like this for much longer. Um, the economy just was not built to be run on mm. two and a half days. All right. So you also have a lot of projects that you would say export the arm, the products and material too, like places yeah. within the Caribbean, mm -hmm. Europe. Not Europe. Uh, right now, our export is only in the Caribbean. Um, and one of the, so our company is going public, uh, hopefully next month is the plan. Nice. And, um, one of the things that we want to do is to work at getting uh, some some steady and consistent clients in North America. So that's our first move. Absolutely. Okay. So so um, how intertwined would you say are your operations and uh, exports with the general needs of construction projects, like locally or overseas? No, I, I I didn't catch it. You broke up a second. Explain it to me. Oh, I was saying oh, how... Oh, oh, I'm seeing the question on screen, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> reasonably, reasonably well. We have a good team of account executives that are on top of most of the construction projects going on around the island and certainly the bigger one. So we see Sandals announced that they are, you know, doing a hotel and we, we have a good relationship with them. So we speak to the relevant persons and we make ourselves available to make sure we're in the bidding process. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, man, that's great. Um, oh, is there any interesting projects that you can tell us that are in the pipeline or or say that that will be coming up? You know, that we might be able to see and recognize in our own. I, I, I would not want, you know, we, we value our customers' um, privacy a great deal. So um, we don't want to speak too much about the the projects we, we, we would like them uh, to allow them to do that so um just to say that we have quite a few 
projects that are new and exciting that are working now. But I wouldn't like to say who they are. <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but do you have any other notable su subsidiaries or associates for JFP? No, we're a family-owned company. Um, <clears throat> have been two cousins who are brothers and myself, um, who have been in the business for thirty-six years, and um, you know we've run it very closely. Uh, mm -hmm. it, all of us have been involved in it, and um, time has come now where we need to br bring in some other people that can learn the business and know. Uh, and that are smarter than us, quite, quite frankly. Oh, succession planning. Yeah, succession planning and um, going to the next level. <clears throat> Absolutely. All right. Is there anything that you look forward to in somebody um, to, to, to make that advancement? Like, what, are, what, are, what do you look for? You know, I always say that I hire for attitude and train for the rest. And um, truth be told is that uh, uh, not that we are looking for somebody specifically, but we're always looking for good people. Um, okay. And that's that's from somebody to take my position down to the person that sits alone. Um, we, we, we consider ourselves a family here and a team here. And if, if everybody's not pulling their weight, then everybody else has to drag a little harder. And that's not what we're into. We're into everybody doing the right thing and pulling in the same direction. Absolutely. And um, I think that's why we've been able to stay successful for the last 36 years. And it's, it's an accomplishment we're proud of. And don't take it lightly because we know how how easy it is for businesses to fall at the wayside. All right. No problem. Like a, like a well-oiled machine, you know? You have to maintain <laughs> that, that, well, that running you, right there. You, you do. And sometimes you have to get out and push, but whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely all right mr siaga i believe that's all of the pertinent questions we had for today all right you know it's been great chatting with you, you know it's been a real pleasure it's been my pleasure i'm happy to do it and um, i look forward to seeing your business and your um what you're doing here grow from strength to strength absolutely uh, hopefully we can even have you back for a repeat interview like after the company has listed and we can discuss um you know where we're sure. going from there <clears throat> excellent you have a number call me anytime all right that's great that's great all right Mitchy, it's been all great right. guys yeah man no problem guys Please. once again Please like comment subscribe Bye. okay great <laughs>